So it's been a little bit since I've actually worked on this machine. It's been a little longer since I've made a video about it. Uh, things just worked out for a little while to where I didn't, I didn't work on it. Um, I started picking back up on it again though, and I got a little bit of stuff done uh, just recently. Got the uh, air pump mounted and the cable caddies, or the cable carriers, I mean, uh, for the tube. Got the lid done. Um, I went to go test the laser, and I, I, I should have footage somewhere uh, of me testing that. And I ran into a problem. The laser didn't want to turn off. And not only that, after further investigation, I couldn't adjust the power either. I mean, I just couldn't. Once I turned it on, there was no control over it anymore. And I narrowed it down to the controller, trying to use this ramps. So I decided to bite the bullet. Um, and instead of going the cheap route and reusing the controller from the old 3D printer, um, I went out and picked up a proper laser, uh, laser cutter controller. It set me back like... Three or four hundred bucks. Actually, <laughs> once all is said and done, I had to get new motor controllers, power uh, 12 volt to 24 volt, because this shit runs on 24 volt for some reason. Um, and uh, there's apparently no 12 volt. Uh, that's a whole whole different thing though, but um, probably closer to 500 bucks. Now, the problem is that I have got to undo all this, <sighs> which it's going to be a pain. It's going to take a long time. I don't know what I'm going to keep. Obviously, I'm not keeping the ramps. Uh, the ramps board uh, and those little motor controllers are going. I thought about using these motor controllers here. Um, and then just soldering it onto the board up here with all the sensors. And using the motor controllers that way without the ramps. But then I decided I may not even be keeping this Arduino. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to... Start taking up, taking out all the wiring and learning this controller. I don't. I'm not entirely sure the full capabilities of this controller. I got to read through the manual and everything still. Um, but that's going to be the next thing I do is getting all this ripped out and replaced with that. Okay, so I got this all at least installed. Um, you got your 12 volt to 24 volt converter, the controller your 12 to 5 volt converter, some relays, uh, the Arduino with the shield that I made on top to run some extra sensors, your uh, motor controllers, and then I have the new faceplate. Much better than the old one. Uh, the old one was just kind of slapped together. Uh, this screen came with the controller itself. Uh, this one is uh, with the power supply. It came with the power supply. And then this one is the screen from the Arduino. Uh, then you have the water pump and Peltier. Now, I get to start rewiring it. Oh. Okay, so another update. I finally got the new controller in and the uh, motor controllers. Um, I kept the Arduino that I made. Well, the Arduino and the shield that I made. Uh, as well as the 5-volt uh, converter and the relays. And I've got the controller and everything hooked up. Uh, I've still got the switch for the water pump and the Peltier. Which you can't really see this other screen very well. There you go. Uh, I've got a couple more switches to add here. I've got to add the uh, air pump, which will pump air into the beam of the laser to ensure that smoke doesn't go up into the nozzle. Then I have to add another switch for the ventilation. Uh, to vent any smoke and everything out the back. I've got a light that I need to add, which you can see right there. It's hanging up. That may not even, I may not even use that. I, I fired that up on my uh, bench top right down here. And that bitch is bright. I, I'm t <laughs> like, it, it shined on my arm and I couldn't even look at my arm. So... I don't know. We're gonna. We'll see if I can adjust the voltage or diffuse it or something. But that may not work. Uh, but I gotta add another switch for the lights here. Um, the controller has several outputs that I could use uh, to like control the lights and the air pump and everything from here. Um, but 
I don't know. I've already got it uh, mounted to switches, so I'll just keep it that way. I did have to change the way that the Z-axis works. Um, if you don't know how it worked before, I've got it on another video up on my channel. You can go watch it there. But I've essentially changed it from the motor being in the back and going around some pulleys to the motor being driven up from the top, uh, much like the way that the old 3D printer was. And then I've just got a set of tensioner pulleys down here. And I've done that for both sides. And it works so much better. Uh, I've also got full control over the laser. Once I turn the switch on, turn the water pump on, you can hear the water. Maybe see some bubbles. But I can pulse. Right now I've got it on super, super low power. Um, I put some paper in front of it and I, it's got to stay in front of it for a good half second before it even burns. So it's really low power at the moment. Um, I don't quite have everything tuned, but it's at least smooth-ish. Uh, another thing that I ended up having to do was changing out this power supply, this 12 volt power supply. Uh, I had burnt it up, not sure how, but I released all the smoke out, which means that it has no more power. So, I picked up this new power supply. Now, the old power supply I had, if you had seen it from the previous videos, really sucked. Um, I didn't know it. I didn't know that it was a bit, it was a problem. But all the step promoters and everything, uh, they were working choppy. Things were just unreliable. Since I got this new power supply, that has all gone away. So, the uh, power supply that I had in here may have been causing a lot more problems than I thought. Um, but yeah, since I got this in, this has made a world of difference. Also, in this controller, this controller was a good buy. Um, I know it was expensive, it was like, with this controller and having to also buy the 12 to 24 volt converter and the three motor controllers and whatever else I had to do, it was worth it. Because there was a lot of stuff I just didn't know I needed to be adjusted. And even if I found that I did need to adjust it, um, the process of flashing those Arduinos, I'm going to bring my laptop over uh, and flash it, then change a setting, measure how far it moved or something like that, then having to adjust it in the laptop, come over here, flash it again, it was, it was a pain. So being able to adjust it from this directly or from the network, I haven't got that hooked up yet, but I will be able to adjust it from the network because it's got a hookup right down there. You can't really see it. Um, but I'll be hooking it up on the network. I'm not going to just adjust it from there, too. Um, but I've still got quite a bit of work to do. i got to put the bed back in. I had to take it out because I changed the Z-axis. Um, once I get the bed in, I have to hook up power and a switch to this, the air pump. Then I have a piece of PVC pipe here with this blower that needs to mount back here. And... Then I got just just got the panels. Uh, the panels are turning out to be kind of a pain because of shipping. I can get every panel I need for this thing, minus the big square that is in the bottom. I need a good four by four foot square down there. And for some reason, I can't find anywhere that will ship one. I mean, I can go to my local supplier up in St. Louis, but that's, I don't know, that's like an hour away. <laughs> and I no longer have a truck. Uh, my El Camino out there is is not functioning so uh, I need to find a piece that will fit down here and then cut out all the pieces for all the rest and it'll be about done after that I'll be ready to start cutting stuff so I am finally for the most part done with the construction part of it uh, the only thing I really have left to do is to skin it up and get all the plates put on all around the outside but everything else is functional and hooked up and wired up. Um, I had started to make plates out of some one mil aluminum sheet. And this stuff's just too thin. Um, as I was cutting it, I mean, it gets wrinkled up. And even if I put bolts in that, I'm not going to be happy with that. It's just, it's too wrinkled. So I went out and bought this plate, this aluminum plate. Uh, two and a half mil. It's pretty thick.
but I got three sheets of this stuff, so uh, that should be enough to, to skin this thing up. But skinning it up is going to be what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. And uh, once that's completed, then it's just a matter of getting the lasers lined up, or I'm sorry, the mirrors lined up, um, the mirrors installed, and firing it up. Okay, so I've got most of the skin on and done. Just aluminum panels cut everywhere. Um, I have this side off currently. It's sitting down here. Uh, I was getting the mirrors lined up. I got the mirrors installed. Uh, I think I've got them pretty much lined up. I've been spending a long time <laughs> getting these things lined up. Um, I have not yet tried to cut anything though, or I've not tried to shoot the laser through the lens. I was just trying to get it lined up in front here. Um, reason being is that this air hose that I ran from my air pump over there is too big to go into the nozzle here. So I ran through my stock of hose and I do not have one that fits this. So I'm going to have to go up to the store and get me a length of hose that will fit and then an adapter that will go into the air pump. Um, and as soon as I do that, I am ready to pump air through this and see if it'll make it to the lens and cut. Um, and once I get that done, I will upload. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of tweaks that have to be made to this. Um, I mean, I could go through just so much, but uh, I will be posting future videos as I make upgrades and stuff. I, I just wanted to get this thing done. It's been so long since I started this been over a year now but I will pick the camera back up again um, as soon as I am ready to make my first cut and uh, you'll be able to see with me how it works out chances are it's not gonna work out very well uh, I've got the power set to really low power um, just while I'm getting things lined up and I'm not gonna really amp it up at all uh, until I start until I know everything is really aligned and I can really start uh, playing around with it So I think we're ready to make the very first cut. Um, I've been working on getting everything aligned, uh, and I believe I have everything aligned. Uh, I was using this as a, as a test target, and these last ones are when I started to bring it up and bring it into focus after I was able to get it through the cutting head. It's a pretty small, pretty small dot. Now, trust me when I say I know there's going to be, like we've just got getting started on the tweaks. Um, but I believe that it is close enough that I can uh, do our first cut. I got some cardboard here. We're going to give it a shot on. Now, it is kind of loud, uh, the air pump. So if you can't hear me, that would be why. I've got it hooked up to my computer currently through USB. And I've got a simple square that I'm upload. Now, I'm not at all entirely sure where... I try to place it pretty much in the middle on the work area on the software, so I'm hoping pretty much going to be around here somewhere. Um, but I'm going to uh, get everything ready and then we're going to upload it and see how the very first cut does. I've not seen it myself yet. Um, over here, you have to make sure that the water pump is on and that the power supply is not uh, giving an error. The water pump is off. You can hear it. Um, but it'll give you a water protection fault. So, I've got another issue that I've got to deal with. Um, and I've just not bothered to track it down yet. But whenever I turn on the air pump or the blower motor in the back, it messes with the screen. It, like, frazzles it and, or something. Uh, but it won't display anymore. Uh, I have to go in and actually unplug the power to the screen and plug it back in and it'll start working. Um, and also, whenever I turn this on, uh, whenever the screen is working, it increases a surge of water flow, even though there isn't any, even with the pump turned off, it'll report a bit of water flow, and the power supply will kick on for a second, and they kick back off, because this is giving a surge somewhere that is making it think there's a water, you know, that there's water flow going through, but that's another issue to take care of at another time. Uh, first we need to go ahead and turn on the air pump so that air is flowing through here. That's 
how it's going in, isn't the cut it through the cutting head. Okay, so let me hit start on the program and we'll see how it does. shame. Otherwise, freaking awesome. <laughs> 